Hey gents, Amersil here. I have not been what anyone would call a huge fan of Akazuki. Uh, I really like Kitakaze, although I haven't played too many games in it. Akazuki is, it's slow, it accelerates very slowly, it does not turn well. It's, it's not the archetypal DD in any way. Uh, you know, in addition to the fact that you've got uh, amazing uh, gun power. It doesn't handle it all like it's good. But, uh, occasionally, even a blind squirrel can find a nut. And today was that kind of day for me with the Akazuki. So I thought I'd share the game here. Uh, as you can see, matchmaking, not terrible. Um, it's a, a tier 9 match. So... That's a big plus. Radar is at a minimum. That's a huge plus. So this gave me an opportunity to, uh, despite the fact that the ship does not have what I would consider fantastic concealment uh, and does not maneuver all that well, <laughs> uh, gave me an opportunity to do some, some spotting for my team and I believe turn in a fairly decent game. Maybe the most important thing about this game in retrospect is that I think it highlights really well the importance of, well, probably for any ship class, but maybe for uh, destroyer captains uh, more so, the importance of managing to survive to the mid and then late game. Because it's my opinion that, I guess really in any ship class, your potential value or uh, impact on the game can increase pretty sharply when there are fewer enemy ships that can shoot at you or throw torps your way. So this for me was a pretty slow start. Uh, initially I thought okay I'm gonna go ahead and push on up here I'll get around this island I'll try and spot in the meantime I'll get around this island and I'll throw torpedoes across because I know a lot of destroyer captains uh, and cruiser captains as well like to get on the north side of that island uh, at sea and oh we get a storm coming and they'll just kind of sit there basically what our fletcher is doing on the south side so i you know i push up and i'm going to go ahead and get some torps sent out that way Booster. What the heck? Get, get a little bit different angle and throw the next set. And I was pretty excited looking at the direction Ibuki was going here, but uh, that didn't work out exactly how I expected. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a mention of uh, Mechanic Crew in the Benson. I believe he played a very good game. I won't give away the ending, but uh, I think he played a really, really great game in the Benson. That's a, that's a ship I've got a few games in, and I think he did a great job. So I wanted to you know, say my hat's off to him and the job that he did. Now, to the north of me, you'll see we've got uh, some pretty heavy hitters. Ibuki moved out of the way of my torps, and uh, <laughs> so did our Benson. So that was uh, that was kind of a wasted effort. I, I guess you could argue it pushed Ibuki out of there, but... Uh, even if it did that, I, I question the actual value of that. But now, I turn my attention to uh, Amagi, DeGrosa, and Alabama all kind of sitting in a bunch. And I'm wishing, at this point in the game, that I still had the ability to throw two benches of torpedoes out. But that didn't work out. But I'm spotting them. Which, as a destroyer, sometimes that's what you got to do. And I know that there was a, another community, a, a, contribut a community contributor, who recently uh, made the point that sometimes uh, holding your fire and being patient is important. So, in that vein, I will say that's basically what I was doing here. I'm just doing some spotting, waiting for my torpedoes to reload. I don't want to open up because uh, I'm probably within secondary range of De Grosse, and between the three of them, they could probably sink me if they focused me. Yep. Big mistake on my part. I wasn't paying attention to how close that fighter was or that uh, spotter plane. My AA activated and gave away my position. 
And that's something really that as a destroyer player, I try to check the beginning of every game, and this time I forgot and it cost me. So those are just predicted torps, hoping I could guess where De Grosso was going. Same thing with this second volley. Of course, between the plane and the possible hydro, I'm, I realized even as I was launching, probably not much, not much chance of a hit. But uh, the threat seems to have stalled their advance, so that's a plus. And the enemy team has lost Fletcher. So we are currently ahead by one ship, though we are losing on points. We've secured a cap, the enemy team has secured a cap, and now we're fighting over the final cap. One thing I will point out is the huge group of red ships at C3, C4, that ballpark. There's the Benson, he's on the move. And I'm thinking to myself, if I were the Benson and I were in that position, what would I be doing? I would probably be trying to torp whoever's sitting on the south side of the island. And I see Fletcher's got his smoke, so it doesn't look like he's moving really yet, so I just said, time to move, Fletcher. And I think I added a little, Benson's likely to be torping your smoke, or something along those lines here. Yeah, because he's just, yeah, Fletcher, likely been some torping your spot. He's just kind of sitting there, and I'm thinking he's about to get whacked. A lot of players resent comments like that. Hey, I know how to play my ship, or whatever, but uh, you see he's moving, so my hand's off to him for at least, even if he resented me saying it, uh, being willing to, to do it. And I'm thinking, okay, we've been some behind the island. Keep contesting the cap. This is a great, great example of what I was talking about with the Sasha, or the, uh, excuse me, the Akazuki. I just barely made that turn. I didn't want to have to slow down beyond where I was, but darn near had to. Darn near crashed into the island and had to stop. Okay, so we've got Alabama pushing up, and I'm thinking, okay, here's an opportunity. But you'll notice the range, and you'll notice my detection range is 6.1, and then he goes dark. Our Fletcher having come back around behind me, and we don't want to have eyes on him. So, I'm going to venture out. I'm trying to watch my angles here. I want to be moving away from him. And there he is, and it's just outside my detection range. And our Fletcher goes down. And we've got the Benson ahead of me. At this point, I'm going to have to try and get some shells on the Benson. You see, he has not taken much damage at all. And I just have to hope that that battleship behind me won't hurt me too badly. Also see our Kiev, but I think he's engaged with a DD that's between those two islands, between B and C. I'm trying to wiggle the ship. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't wiggle very well. I'm trying to predict where the Benson's going to go. Not all that successful. But I'm no longer spotted. So I got a decision I need to make. Do I push into the smoke? Do I fall back? The thing that made the decision for me was looking where our key is positioned. In my opinion, he's very out of position down there. 
but I don't want the Benson to be able to move on them and sink him. So I want to put some pressure on the Benson, and I can see right there that his smoke trail was moving from north to south. Now, that doesn't mean he couldn't now be turning around and going north, but it tells me that he was at least considering going after the key. You'll notice I'm keeping my guns all to the uh, port side. And that's the approach vector I'm going to take. Could have waited on the torps, but I saw an opportunity and didn't want to let it go. There's our Benson. He did turn around and run north. I gotta do as much damage to him as I can. The idea here, let's finish him off if possible. I got a battleship that's coming up behind me. And a Grossa there. So I'm gonna have to do something to avoid being sunk here. Landed a few on the Alabama. Come smoke up. I was hoping to finish the Benson, but just couldn't. He had his big friends there helping him out. And all things considered, I'm feeling a little bit fortunate to have survived that. So now I've just got to try and create as much distance as I can and wait for my engines to repair. I'm not using my repair because if I get caught on fire or some some other system gets damaged if I get spotted, I want to make sure I have it. <clears throat> okay, so we're 11 and a half minutes into the game. I've got 47,000 damage. Uh, it's not horrible, but certainly nothing to write home about. Again, been playing kind of a quiet game thus far. But <clears throat> now... I believe uh, that my ship is in a position to really make a difference. Numbers are a little bit thinned out. We've got a points lead. Although the enemy team is contesting BCAP. And I've got DeGrosso pushing up behind me. And this ship is really slow and it bleeds speed like crazy when it turns. So I've got Alabama to my north. I've got DeGrosso coming up pushing behind me. And I got our friendly key caught right in the middle between those two. So I'm thinking to myself right right now, this guy's going down. Yeah, so he had 30-some-odd thousand to begin with. He's burning. He's down to 23. He's not going to last much longer. So I can't rush in there trying to save the day. I really, I, I believe, owe it to my team to stay alive, to try and be able to do damage. I can't help him where he's at right now. I just, I wish I could. Sure, he wasn't going to change course and speed. I throw the corpse out. Now I'm going to kick, kick in the, the afterburners here and try to create a little bit more space so I can maneuver. Still got Alabama. I'm imagining that he has turned west, but I don't know that for a fact. Yeah, he's. He's probably feeling a little bit bad right now. So, land three torps. Basically double the amount of damage I've done this game. And he's doing some flooding. Had I charged in earlier, trying to finish off the Benson, I probably would have been sunk. And this guy and the Alabama... Uh, would both be moving on this side with impunity. Okay, so the damage has stopped, but I see his guns are faced the other way, so I'm going to open up on him and see if I can't get him burning, or just flat finish him off. I'm shooting superstructure because I think I can do damage there. Okay, there's my fire. I've lost sight, but I throw out a few more shells, and he's going to burn out. Now we got Alabama. <laughs> Where's
Where's he going? Where's he going? Oh, I caught a glimpse of that Benson. He's almost dead, and he's obviously positioning himself to help defend B Cat. So I'm thinking here, all right, I'm going to move up. I'm not going to waste these torps. I'm going to probably end up using these at short range. I'm going to move up here, and I'm going to gun down the Benson. So you'll see I swing all my weapons to port side. Well, in a second. To get ready to fire on Benson. He's slowly reversing ahead of the advancing Baltimore. And he's going to be an easy shot. One shot kill. Alright, so now I know I've got an Alabama behind the island. And I anticipate that there's going to be a plane. Which does happen here any second. So I'm going to try and stay behind the island. There's the plane. I've already clicked on it. And I'll shoot it down here in short order. I'm going to keep my, my bearing more or less still where I can change things. Okay, plane goes down. Now he's he's got a guess which side I'm coming on. He doesn't make a bad guess, but he's really not ready. And I've got all my torpedoes at basically point blank, blank range. Now I'm going to have to finish him here one way or the other, or he's going to kill me. The ship does not maneuver well enough to be able to survive this close range encounter with this battleship. He's got 22,000 hit points. I have to kind of guess which way he's going. I do that, throw the torps out. Uh, and go ahead and just get the guns going. The secondaries are firing on me, but I'm going to do everything I can with my guns. Smoke up. Only landed one, but did significant damage, and just keep pounding the shells home there until he's gone. He doesn't move fast enough in reverse to make a difference, so I'm just going to stay on the same target, and down it goes. Okay, so take a quick reading. We got this game in the bag. Uh, that's what I'm thinking here. Masashi's behind the island. He's probably going to YOLO in, and that's that's what he's that's what he's looking like he's going to do. So just try and get some fires going. Got a little over a minute on my smoke. Yeah, Masashi is accelerating. Now I had about a hundred and hundred shell hits more or less when I started firing on this Masashi. But he's so occupied with everybody else, and I'm sitting here in smoke at kind of longish range. I'm just able to just keep raining shells down on top of him. I'm just trying to start fires. Smoke's about to go. I could have angled and started moving away. But he's got too many other targets that are actually hurting him a lot more, so I'm not going to worry about it. Can't really afford to throw torpedoes. So I just keep the guns working. just in the last minute or so, more or less doubled my guns. Uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys.